I think it just comes natural really. I think you either like hot rods or you don't. The first hot rod I seen I was at the Shannon school and a guy by the name of Stephen Fox had a 35 or 36 Ford coupe. That was it. Once I seen that I was into it. I've always looked at magazines and liked all the early cars, 32s and I've had later cars and wanted to build an older car but a Model A was in the affordable range. It was a starting point I could get into and start building. I find Model A's are a little bit shorter in the bottom end of the body than a 32 but they're not as fat looking in the boot area or roof I don't feel. It'll probably upset some people but I, I just like the proportions of them. I wanted the car to look like a car, say a 40s style car that someone had thrown a Cadillac motor into in the 50s. That was my theme all the way along. It had to be fenderless, it had to be cross plies, it had to be chopped and channeled. motivation for it all has been a tight bugger. I thought the only way I'm going to get into it is if I have a go myself. The worst thing that I could have done was muck it up. So that's why I started doing it. The other cars I've had have had paint jobs, motor changes and things like that. But this is the first car I've actually built the whole car. I think it was 10 years off and on. A little bit of a start and then it died off for a long time, then back into it again. But about 10 years in total. If it wasn't for my wife Rochelle, she would say, oh, just keep going or have another go, and I'd throw that part away and try something new, you know. But her encouragement was a big help all the way through. I suppose it kept me out of the house. I've already had bought a sports coupe body from a local guy here. Started to build the chassis, built a new floor for it and channeled that then ended up with this body. This body had a roof for a start. It was all pretty much together. A couple of patch panels had been done and they'd been done pretty well. It was unchopped, unchanneled, in stock condition I suppose. Well, it's a repo of one of my 32 frame rails with a Model A rear cross member, aftermarket front flattened out Model A cross member, X members, it's been pinched, squeezed in a little bit to go under the body and lengthened about 20 mil or three quarters of an inch. Now the front end I'm using a Superbill four inch dropped I-beam with a Superbill uh, spring and the rest of the running gear is brakes and all that, it's all early board. Originally I was going to go down the flathead track but after thinking about it for a while I decided that the Cadillac engine was really what I was after. I've always had a special like for Cadillacs, I just gravitate to them, I don't know why. Maybe the uglier they are, the better. Channeled about two inches, I think, but I radius the front cowl up like the 32 does, so it sort of comes up to the height of the frame again, and a lot of people don't even notice that it's been done. Rear quarters are custom, I just put my own swages into those. Grill shell is a vintage one that I've sectioned. The grill insert I just fabricated. I folded up some little channels and squashed them to make the bars. Then made the stainless uh, ring to go around the outside. I call it an autumn's grill because it's not quite a winter's. The interior is finished for me but looks unfinished and that's the way it's going to stay. 38 dash that I welded to a Model A dash rail and shortened, a 39 steering wheel. All of the woodwork on the inside was made up out of whatever oak I could scrounge up, old oak headboards and wardrobes and tables and, and that's it, it's pretty simple. For me it's about the details, I tell people I was building it for train spotters really because it's only people who really know what they're looking at, notice the little things. Everything has been done before, so you just sort of try your best I suppose and the end result may work out that you've got something a little bit different. 
you've got to stick to the theme all the way along. Don't deviate off it. Don't second guess yourself. It's easy to second guess yourself. You'll be building a car forever if you keep on doing that. So once you've made a decision and built it, stick with it and it'll be all right then. Problem solving is fun. Not at the time, but if you sort it out, it's fun. Like everyone else says, you know you're driving an old car, but there's something about it that you don't want to get out of it once you're in it. I wanted it to be a traditional car, and it's hard when everyone's telling you you need disc brakes, you need radial tyres, to stick to what you want to do. It feels alive. You feel that you're driving the car. definitely a sense of achievement and every time I walk into the garage I'll look and go wow that's cool and I didn't think I'd say that about anything that I'd done myself and I don't want to sound you know big headed or <laughs> anything but yeah you, you, you do feel like you've achieved something I think once you've built a car people have built a car know how much work's involved and you appreciate what other people have done in the past I don't think you'll ever really know what they experienced, but you have your own ideas or thoughts of what they may have experienced, so you're trying to create that, I guess. I think hot riding to me is about having fun. If you're not having fun doing it, then don't. It's got to be fun. I don't think I'll ever lose the bug. I don't think I'll ever be a vintage car guy or a classic car guy. I'm not a petrol head, I don't call myself a hot rider. Yeah.